Hey guys, welcome back. It's your girl IQ and today's deep dive is exploring the world of Aaron Carter. We're taking a look at his humble beginnings, his dysfunctional family relationships, his struggles in life and love, so many of his controversies, candid social media moments, and trying to piece together the man behind the camera. So let's explore the unpredictable, contradicting, and ever-changing bizarre world of Aaron Carter. So on with the show. And backstreet boy wife that needs to go brush their teeth and wipe their butthole. Aaron Carter can do it all. He can sing. <laughs> he can act. You are going to be a normal kid at a normal high school. You can't send me to a public school, mom. I'm a celebrity. He can dance. <laughs> And with all of his constant feuding and fallouts online, he is constantly in some type of drama. And for that, he may just be the most interesting man in the world. He is the life of parties he has never attended. If he were to punch you in the face, you would have to fight off the strong urge to thank him. Perfect. Sharks have a week dedicated to him. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer those Zaki's. Stay thirsty, my friend. We are about to go on one hell of a ride. So the start of our story begins in 1987 when little Aaron Charles Carter was born on December 7th in Tampa, Florida to Jane Elizabeth Spaulding and Robert Jean Carter. And I'm not sure if you knew this, but he was not the only one in his family born that day. Aaron actually has a twin sister named Angel. And just know that the Carter family was not exactly leave it to beaver. And I personally can relate to a dysfunctional family. So I really empathize with all of the siblings as a lot of the issues that they encountered back then still affect them greatly to this day. And you know, honestly, it makes me uncomfortable to be around people who had the perfect family growing up because mine was so abnormally f***ed up. So I always relate to those with chaotic and toxic families because I myself am a product of one. Which leads me to why we are exploring the world of Aaron Carter today. A lot of drama was perpetuated by events that happened in his childhood, and we will revisit that a little later. But for now, Aaron first came onto the scene as the little brother to Backstreet Boy Nick Carter, who was at the time an international superstar. Nick is a member of the Backstreet Boys, world famous an honest-to-goodness teen idol. And he honed those skills where he grew up, right here in Tampa. A teacher at Miles Elementary School gave him a break, a starring role in the 1990 school play Phantom of the Opera. Nick was 10. She heard about me being in a lower grade and me singing, you know, and um, she auditioned me for the part, and she made, they made an exception for me to play the part. And really, from that point on, you know, I was just, I was stuck with singing and acting. So I do owe a lot of credit to her. Now, Aaron explained exactly how his brother was ultimately discovered. I mean, my mom and dad pretty much, you know, saw that Nick could sing really well. And then they saw that I was a kick-ass performer, but I, I couldn't sing that well yet. Right. I got better. Yeah. But it just, it took, it took time, you know, because I was kind of a gimmick. Right. You got to understand, my career started off as a comedy gimmick because Johnny oh, Wright said it was for, a joke. A, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. joke. He was wow. planning on doing it as a joke. And all of a sudden, it just it skyrocketed. <laughs> 
You're down in Tampa where you grew up. Yeah. You're just a big fan of music. Were you always musical? Were you like early jumping on the keys? Or well, the drums? it was. Well, I I have a I have an older brother. Yep. His name's Prick Carter. There it is. We love him. We love Prick, him. The prick, Nick the Prick. <laughs> Fucking dickhead. An influence. Um, either way you cut it, right? Man, whatever. He's yeah. an older brother. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, we don't really like each other. Uh, no, just kidding. Yeah. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> stick it up your ass and rotate, bro. But uh, no, okay, rotate. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah rotate. Uh, no, uh, next, you know, we grew up in Tampa. All my rest of my family is from upstate New York. We go down to Tampa. My twin sister and I were born in Tampa. And then Nick auditioned for um, uh, that star show. What star Search. It? Star Search. Yeah. Way back in the day. Yeah. He got it. He did like a Frank Sinatra song or whatever. And then... He uh, auditioned for Backstreet Boys at 12, 13, and then we never saw him again. I'm not sure if you could sense the animosity in that clip, but let me forewarn you. There is plenty more animosity to come in this video. I'm giving you fair warning now. Fuck you! Well, what did Hunky. Nick and Aaron do to stop arguing? Well, we find something we both like to do together. I like to sing high. I like to sing low. You know... <laughs> We're two brothers, me and you, each with an opposite point of view. And from there, at the height of the 90s boy band domination, both Aaron and his brother Nick were one of the most sought after child stars. They did records and touring and TV gigs and magazine covers. And at this time, at least according to the public, all seemed well. And no one in the family was really getting in trouble. There was really no major drama. And according to Aaron, right around the time he was getting his driver's license, he met up with the one and only king of pop, Michael Jackson. And according to him, they smoked weed together in the back of a car that Aaron was driving. I was like, well, I don't want to smoke on the property at Neverland. Yeah. Like, I'm 15. I said, can I drive the Bentley? I have a permit. I can drive with an adult. And I want to go try to drive over to my old house and show you where I used to live. I'm rolling the blunt in the car. We're in his Bentley. And... We were listening to this song, Can You Be My Butterfly? And like, he's in the passenger seat. Remember, I'm driving. And I rolled the blunt. We start smoking, smoking blunt, normal. Then, my, you know, Michael could move like no other man in this world. Like sure. a robot. Yeah. He was very robotic. Like just his, his head, like movement. So he started like doing like some like tutting in the car. Holy, shit, dude. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. And he's like, <laughs> and I look over at him. I'm like, oh, fuck. He's because, freaking out. You know, I freaked out because like, I, you, I started seeing something different. And Michael got a lot of plastic surgery done. Yeah. So up close, it was a little scary There's sometimes. a lot going on, There's yeah. a lot going on there. And he was popping and locking and shit. And I looked over at him and I went, nah. <laughs> Probably the first hiccup of negative media attention in the family was when his brother Nick was arrested when he was 18 years old. And the whole story was odd because he was allegedly drunk and resisted an officer's instructions. His squeaky clean image tarnished after Nick Carter is arrested. Nick Carter, shown here flashing a peace sign just hours before his brush with the law, was arrested at the Tampa nightclub Pop City Wednesday for allegedly ignoring police orders. And so warning, he was subsequently arrested for uh, resisting or opposing a police officer without violence. According to Tampa police spokesman Joe Durkin, 21-year-old pop star was handcuffed and ticketed after refusing police orders to shut up and leave the club after a fight broke out. The cops say Nick wasn't being violent. He just wouldn't stop arguing with a woman. He's kind of the last of the Backstreet Boys that you'd expect to get arrested. So it's important to note this event because at this time, the Carter family had a pretty squeaky clean image and there was really no talk about the family dysfunction during this time. So the first time Aaron was actually in some negative press occurred in his early teens during his high profile romance to Disney star Hilary Duff. Now they met on the set of Lizzie McGuire and they were the it teen couple back then, but that teen romance was short lived as he did cheat on her with Lindsay Lohan. And that was like a huge scandal back in the day because they were all mega popular back then. So no pun intended, but this is as Disney as the drama in Aaron's life is going to be at this time. But from this point on, things get more dark and more twisted and more confusing.
And then came the family's reality TV show, The House of Carters, which really gave us a glimpse at the dysfunction within the family. So when they would argue, what would you guys do? You said that you, we, we would just go together. And hide and we would all hide together. They would come in and they would ask us, who do you want to live with? You have to pick right now. And it was our first look into how toxic their family really was. There was a ton of resentment, lots of fighting, and a lot of feeling like people were not being heard, valued, and ignored, especially from the women in the family. There was so much substance abuse being talked about by many of the Carter siblings, and Aaron was no stranger to this as well. And as it is commonly known, evidence has shown that there is a strong correlation between trauma and substance abuse, especially in adolescence. The sad part is that it seems like the girls in the family felt extremely ignored by their parents, while their two brothers were given the most attention due to their stardom. And I ended up with like the really bad crowd, but because my parents were so focused on them, I was kind of allowed to just do whatever I wanted to. I was a bad, I don't, I didn't do it to try to get their attention, but maybe subconsciously I was. I didn't go to school hardly at all. I would come home so up out of my mind and they wouldn't even notice. No one really ever noticed me. Nick stated that he felt used by his parents. You know what I'm frustrated about? Years and years of crying wolf, of tearing up this family emotionally. Even dad, understand that I'm mad at both of them, but they have done to us out of just anger, anger. My heart lies with you and all the years that they've done to us. And Nick's not the only one. According to Aaron's dad, their mother used to call Aaron the cash cow. That's your mom. She's got to stop trying to make you guys feel guilty. I'm just kind of weak. Stop. Stop. Stop being weak. You got to step up and be the man. You got to put the foot down and say, that's it. I love you, but I'm not your cash cow anymore. And that's what your name used to be, cash cow. And according to the Carter boys at the time, their mom was more like a manager than a mother to them. And most of their feud at the time was well documented on a tell all interview on 2020. And at this time, both Nick and Aaron had a united front about their gripes with their parents and in particular, their mom. In the words of Nick and Aaron Carter, who said they had to cut their mother out of their lives because she insisted on acting like a boss instead of a mom. We were starved for that attention of a motherly figure. In addition, it was around this time that Aaron was supposed to have access to his trust fund set up by the Coogan Law. And his background, the Coogan Law is named after the child actor Jackie Coogan, who was discovered by Charlie Chaplin and soon after was cast in the comedian's famous film, The Kid. Now, in the 1920s, there was full-on Jackie mania, and it spawned a wave of merchandise being dedicated to his image, and it wasn't until his 21st birthday after the death of his father, and once his child film career started dwindling, that Jackie realized he was left with none of the earnings he had worked so hard for as a child. And under California law at the time, all earnings of a minor belonged solely to the parents. So... Jackie Coogan eventually sued his mother and former manager for his earnings. And as a result, in 1939, the Coogan Law was put into effect. And that was to protect future young actors from finding themselves in the same terrible situation. So the law now requires that 15% of all minors' earnings must be set aside in a blocked trust fund commonly known as the Coogan account. What are you going to do about it? You stand there and take it? Certainly not. I'm going to send Palmer an assaulting letter. <laughs> Darling, I don't think we should lend our name to such a thing. He could sign it a friend. So with that background, let's get back to Aaron. Aaron was set up to receive close to $5 million in his Coogan account. But here's what he chose to do with the money instead. Financially, I'm in a terrible position. When I turned 18, I got hit with all those taxes. When you look at the bankruptcy and everything, you actually took the bullet for your parents. I did. I wanted you to know that I appreciate that. Because if it was me, I don't know if I would have taken the bullet. No, everybody told me not to take the brunt of this bankruptcy.
When he turned 18, Aaron had millions of dollars in the bank, but he decided to sign it over to his parents to prevent them from going to jail for tax evasion. Now, say what you want about Aaron, but what he did for his parents was extremely admirable because I don't know many people that would have done the same thing. Instead of suing their parents for their own actions while they were a minor. So you have to give credit where credit's due. And this was the first event that really led to his ever continuing problems with money. Now, a few years after this, he went on to join season nine of Dancing with the Stars and did a fantastic job. He was eliminated in week eight, ending in fifth place. And he had a great run and really good press came his way during this time. But unfortunately, after this, you are not going to hear much, if any, good press about Aaron's life. So after Dancing with the Stars, Aaron did do a bit of touring in the year 2010, but by the following year in January of 2011, his manager at the time, Johnny Wright, announced that Aaron had entered a treatment facility to heal some emotional and spiritual issues he was dealing with. This was the first indication that underlying issues were really affecting Aaron at this time. And this is the beginning of a series of tragic events for Aaron. The following year, his sister Leslie died at the young age of 25 in New York by overdosing on prescription medication. There was a lot of drama during this time because according to Nick, the family blamed him for his sister's death, and there was a lot of internal conflict surrounding his decision to not attend her funeral. Why did you not go to your sister's funeral? The, the reason I did not go was because um, I actually got the phone call from my father um, that, she, uh, that she had uh, passed, and, um, and immediately the, it, the, the conversation turned into not about her death, and not about the actual uh, um, the passing and what had occurred and more about themselves. And then I started to get blamed by the rest of the family. And I, I have a large family, they all went there and they were blaming me for the death. So probably the years 2012 through 2016 were the last quiet years in the public for Aaron. And he had a few tours here and there during that time, but he kept a pretty low profile and things seemed to be going pretty good with his brother as Nick stood up for him in regards to Aaron being compared to Justin Bieber. You were like the original Justin Bieber. Like, do you think he copied your style at all? I'll let my big brother respond. Okay, listen, listen. Justin Bieber's yeah. cool and all. It's a whole new generation. But um, he's Canadian, Aaron's American. Go back to Canada, Justin. America, stick with my brother. <laughs> In the year 2017, his story takes a turn for the worse. From this point on, his face will almost constantly appear on tabloids and news outlets for his increasingly shocking and outrageous behavior. In May 2017, the family patriarch, Bob Carter, passed away at the young age of 65 from what was believed to be a heart attack. Aaron posted on Instagram, which he had recently just joined, my heart is broken. We are so hurt we lost you, Papa, way too soon. You were never human to me. You were always my real life superhero. Hashtag Bob Carter, hashtag RIP, hashtag my daddy. This clip that I'm going to show you from the House of Carters shows how much he loved this man. The doctor's here. <laughs> how you doing, son? <laughs> now, have you ever seen him act like this with anyone else? This side of Aaron was only seen when he was in this man's presence. So he obviously was devastated, and the following months did not help much either. 
Two months after his father's passing, he was arrested and released on bond in Georgia for a DUI and drug possession. His mugshot made the rounds online and people were shocked by his frail appearance. Alan Carter arrested over the weekend and he's not taking this quietly. In fact, he says he is going to sue the police department, uh, the sheriff's department that where he was arrested in Georgia. Uh, he was arrested for DUI refusal, not a DUI. Uh, Aaron was arrested for DUI refusal at an, an auto, auto zone. zone. Yeah, not driving at the time. Car. Yes, this was in Cornelia, Georgia. And two months after his arrest, he made an appearance on the doctors trying to explain his situation and his declining appearance. Aaron's shockingly gone appearance has been talked about incessantly. Could it actually be attributed to an undiagnosed health issue? One of the other reasons you're here is to set the record straight about drug use because you have been adamant. Anytime anyone has suggested, oh my gosh, he uses meth, he uses cocaine. Right. You're acknowledging that you use these prescription medications. I've dealt with a lot of negativity, body shaming, being made fun of, saying I look like I have AIDS, I have cancer. He definitely looks like he's on some hard drugs. Why am I so thin? Acid reflux, high out of hernia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my fingers are too skinny. And you don't like the way that I look. I think the stress has been what's been causing me to not gain weight. Like, I've just been trying to just uh, get my life together. I want to be able to be honest to myself and then to the world. Now, there seemed to be a lot of animosity that Aaron gave towards his brother Nick at the time. Now, resentment was probably already there. But especially after this point, Aaron will constantly publicly voice his opinions about his brother and bring up a variety of beefs that he has with him. All the time, from this point forward. Uh -huh. Nick, he got three new lies arrested five or six times. Was it blown up as much as me? No, it wasn't. Why do people target me? Not go publicly on TV. Say your relationship with your siblings is, is toxic. Is that true as of today? It has been toxic. The communication is something that I'm still to, the, to this day trying to work on. How dare you, Nick? You had my number and they left me in jail. I don't need tough love. I've had enough tough love in my life. I was beat up by my brother my whole life. Aaron made a few appearances on the doctors throughout the years, but in one of his latest appearances on the doctors, he did admit that his first appearance on the doctors was a lie. And he went on to state, I have to apologize to you because I lied to you when I came here. I have a truth and I'm going to reveal it right now. The reason why I went to rehab is for aerosols and duster cans. That's why I went. I lied to you and I'm sorry. I'm here to make amends, do the first step of 12 steps, admit that I was powerless and I can believe in something greater than myself. Second, you know, make amends for my shortcomings. And this time, Aaron was back on the doctors basically to get help for his mom who was a struggling alcoholic. Now, guys, this is where things really start to get intense because Aaron's use of social media, especially his IG lives, really starts to ramp up and start making headlines. For starters, there was a huge uproar by the public when there were accusations that Aaron allegedly, allegedly was flipping rescue dogs for profit. And it all started in August, 2019, when Lancaster Animal Care Center posted Update, we're working on this situation. Thanks to all for your concern. Check this out. At Aaron Carter, stopped by the care center today and fell in love with our little meathead, Mighty. Thank you for adopting, Aaron. We're glad Mighty gets to hang out with the flyest kid on the block. Happy tails, baby boy, we love you. And three days after that post, a Twitter user by the name Aaron Carter's Truth posted, you're supporting someone who literally adopts dogs from shelters, claiming to be a loving caregiver, but instead sells them to others for a huge profit because they were owned by Aaron Carter. You find nothing wrong with that? 
He goes through dog after dog after dog, hashtag truth. And in this post, there's also a link to a video. That same day, Aaron responded by saying, I think it's appalling that I actually even have to explain myself. I've rescued many dogs and found many dogs' homes. What I said in my Instagram Live video was a joke. Find one dog that I adopted and sold for money. Be my guest. Won't happen. I'm a good person and I deserve respect. So I'm not sure where the joke was, but according to him, it was. And the good news is that regardless whether it was a joke or whether it was not, we have not heard of any resemblance of flipping animals going on from this point forward. And a month after this, he started posting a lot about needing guns and assault rifles. So in his words, he wanted to use them as protection for his family. Do you feel the need to own uh, an assault rifle? Absolutely. I am. For, for what reason? For what reason? What do you think, Mom? Protect yourself against crazy. What, what did my what, what, well, what, did, what did my father what did my father teach me? He protected our family one time when we were on a boat and we were going to get robbed by people when we were staying on an island. And he protect he saved our lives so on an is. island. And in the next few days, he was seen shopping for guns and posting videos about gun safety. All right, guys, this is how you take care of your guns safely. That's how you travel with those firearms safe. Always got to make sure your firearms. I just did my up. safety course. Just did it. Yep. How did I do? Did great. All right. So there you go. That's how you always travel with your gun. And ironically, a few days after that, Nick posted on Twitter the following message. Hashtag mental health. Hashtag gun control now. Hashtag gun control. After careful consideration, my sister Angel and I Regret that we were required to seek a restraining order against our brother, Aaron, today. In light of Aaron's increasingly alarming behavior and his recent confession that he harbors thoughts and intentions of f***ing my pregnant wife and unborn child, we were left with no choice but to take every measure possible to protect ourselves and our family. We love our brother and truly hope he gets the proper treatment he needs before any harm comes to him or anyone else. And so you have to remember, this wasn't just coming from Nick. It was also coming from Aaron's twin sister, Angel, who also sought a restraining order. And a few days later, Aaron posted the following tweets. I'm so scared that something is going to happen to me. I endured so much abuse from Nick that I don't know what he's capable of. If something happens, I let God lead the way and he is with me. I'm well aware many of you have shown concern for me over the past few weeks. Having people who genuinely care for you is something that should never be taken for granted. For as long as I could remember, I've chased unconditional love and hoped for true stability in my family. I've spent most of my adult life seeking validation from these same people. I started to get a chip on my shoulder when I kept coming up short on something that doesn't cost a thing. Love. All I want is love. What has transpired recently does not represent my true wants or needs. I've been fighting fire with fire, something I still need to work on. Some have pointed and laughed, but many, many more have shown genuine support for what I've been vulnerable enough to share. For the record, I'm okay. I'm simply choosing to no longer be controlled by fear. I don't fear my past. I do not fear the truth. I don't fear anyone but God. I have never had thoughts of causing anyone pain, let alone taking anyone's life. It was hurtful to me to read these things because if these people really knew me, they would never use that as a tactic to control me. What's actually more hurtful though, is knowing how affected my innocent nieces and nephews will be by choices the adults around them have made. With that in mind, I ask everyone to please leave me alone and let the legal system do their thing. 
Thank you so much for the support. The truth shall set you free. One love, AC. And then three days after this post, Aaron was on video stating that he had given back all of his guns and surrendered the rest over to the police. And when probed further, he admitted the reason was because he was ordered to return the firearms because of the temporary restraining order that was placed on him at the time. So a lot of people are concerned, you know, that you have guns and they don't think you're in a good state of mind, good enough to- Look, I sold all my guns yesterday. You sold, you sold your guns? So look at, I mean, the deal of records now. So you no longer have any, any firearms in the house? Nope, the other two I surrendered to the, uh, the police station. Oh, so because you have to, as opposed, because you, now the restraining order is a law, the law dictates that you have to surrender your, your firearms? Temporarily. Uh-huh. Because it's a TRO. TRO is a temporary restraining yeah. order with the EPO. Are you hoping to get them back at some point? That's no one's business. All right. Because I, I will prevail. And Aaron was adamant that he did not do what his siblings accused him of doing. So I think at this point he was hoping to get his guns back when he fought the restraining order. Um, one side has to be lying. So who do you believe in this scenario? So let's fast forward a few months, and this is the time that the courts decided if the temporary restraining order could be turned into a full protective order. Aaron posted on November 16, 2019, it's time to stop airing our family problems and issues in the public eye. I hope someday we can all be adult enough to talk to each other instead of lawyers and courts. Hashtag family. Now I love that sentiment, but sadly that was not meant to be at least at this point in time making this video. Now, the day before court, Aaron posted a series of quotes. He said, hashtag ready for court, and then pulling up to downtown LA, hashtag game on, hashtag you don't choose your family. I could never forgive them. I'm blessed I know this. I will make my own family one day, and my music and talents will only get bigger. I'm taking over the world by storm. And on this day in court, Aaron lost his case. The judge issued an order prohibiting Aaron from having any contact with his sister or her family for a year. And Aaron was livid and was caught by cameras after the judgment went down. No, I, 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 hold on, hold on. All right. I'm not playing your game. You're playing my game and it's not over. Aaron, I, said, I, I know. No, 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 you're done. You're done. Listen to me. I said, you're done talking. You understand no, what I said? Hey. How you feeling, man? Best of luck. No, How you feeling? No Did you hear what I said? No You're done talking. Sadly, even to this day, there are still rifts in their family, but the good news is that the restraining order from 2019 was the first and hopefully last that the Carter family has to endure in court. Now, believe it or not, Aaron Carter was not done making his imprint on the world in 2019. Now, I wanted to give the whole restraining order saga an easy and digestible sequence, but no joke, in between this whole restraining order scandal, Aaron made so many notorious appearances on popular podcasts like Impulsive and No Jumper, which had a lot of people scratching their heads. Here is what is so perplexing about Aaron Carter. We know at this point about a lot of his crazy antics, but have you ever wondered what is real and what is fake? And I'm not talking about his diagnosis or anything serious like the conflicts within his family, but the other random things, the outrageous claims, the contradictions, some of the bizarre behavior, the ranting, I mean, he has said on multiple occasions that he is the Joker and we're all just playing his game. And there's nothing fake or scripted about me. I know everything you guys say about me. I read all your articles. I don't have a publicist. I am him. He's his own publicist I'm the now. Joker and you guys are all playing my game. So here's some of the tweets. Good night, hashtag the Joker, click, click, bait, bait. I'm not playing your game. 
You're playing mine. I love dragging the trolls into the sunlight where they're screaming and crying no. And then I turn their asses to stone. I'm a mastermind at what I do. Beyond what any of you think, I slay trolls savagely. I'm the biggest topic in the world. No one can touch me musically. I'm an actual genius. I know exactly what I'm doing. My record sales prove it, my shows prove it, and I'm making a difference that everyone else is afraid of doing. I'm the best at this. Invented, hashtag the black web. So which one is it? Is he playing us or is he just out of control? And not to mention, I can see him wanting to troll the trolls because honestly, guys, it does get crazy. The amount of unwarranted hate that this man gets. For example, he's probably going to die in 2020. And then Aaron responded, I wish you all the best in 2020. God bless. A message from my quote unquote fans. I appreciate your well wishes. XOXO. I mean, he handled that better than I would have. Um, So I get him wanting to troll some of these trolls because that's just wrong. That's abhorrent. Okay. But what about everyone else? So not everything's what it seems. Exactly. That's the game that you're playing. I'm not playing your game. You're playing mine. So let's talk about his social media presence that, in my opinion, drastically changed from 2019 and on. And let's not forget to recap, 2019 was the year of his first appearance on The Doctors, it was the year of his arrest, the restraining order from his siblings, his purchasing and subsequently releasing ownership of his guns, and the epically bizarre appearances on Impulsive and No Jumper. 2019 was a busy-ass year for Aaron, Let's first discuss one of the most controversial topics, and that is when Aaron goes off during his IG lives. Now, what really sets him off with trolls is when he feels he's being disrespected or not being given the credit that he feels he is owed. Austin, you're a bitch. Get out of here. You're here, I'm not there. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it the other way around. I'm not watching your Instagram live. You're watching mine. And I deserve respect and I deserve credit for what I do and how good I am at it. There are many times I'm sure his anger is warranted, but more often than not, a lot of it comes from misunderstandings. And you guys, this clip made me cringe and you'll see exactly why. These fucking people's brains. Oh, you gonna gonna decline too, bitch? Fuck you, what? Come on, guys. Who the f*** is you? Oh, I already know. Oh, I already know. Oh, I already know. What the f***? What's up? Aaron f***ing Carter? Who is you? Who is you? I'm ready to start playing Aaron's party right now, motherfucker. I don't even know. Listen here, bitch. I don't know what that is. Why are your eyes so tweaked out? You all right? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why the f*** are you talking to me like that? Why are you saying motherfucker? Don't call me motherfucker and don't expect me not to retaliate, bitch. Oh. Hey, who you looking at? They gonna help you? Don't call me motherfucker. Got it? Hey, hey, hey. Look at me. Don't call me motherfucker, motherfucker. And they get pissed off when someone calls you motherfucker okay. and calls you a bitch right back, all right? You reap what you sow. Okay. All right? Apologize. Okay. Apologize. All right? Say I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, guess what? I'm sorry. All right, you are? No. Then f*** you, bitch. I know you're not sorry. Go smoke. Go, go do some more meth. You seen your eyes? Look at You're in the light and your eyes are... Oh, my God. Look at you. Go get your nails done. Go get your nails done. You can't afford to get your nails done? <laughs> and your roof? Oh, bitch. Bitch, please. Bitch, bitch oh, please. please. Nobody cares about you. The world doesn't even know you. Go get your hair done. What? Go get your Aaron, hair done. Go Aaron, get your hair done, huh? Do you like having people watch everything you do? Do you, do you what, what do you care? Apparently you're watching, so you're clearly here. Yeah, 
not, and I'm a fan, and it's really You're not a fan. You're not going to come in here and be like, motherfucker. No. What's up, bitch? Wait. Your puppy's really cute. And you're not. Oh, I know. Oh, I know you now. Go back on your YouTube channel. Go back in your f***ing little f***ing shit. Go do what you got to do. I know all you guys, all right? <laughs> I hope you don't fart with that No, laugh. no, no. Dead ass, dude. I can't even believe you accepted my request first off. And then you insult me. Aaron. You don't know me. Aaron you don't know me from a can of paint. Stuff since Lizzie McGuire. I don't care. I'm not Lizzie McGuire. Who's that? Aaron Hardy. Ooh, that shit's my jam. You I don't give a f f Okay, keep stay in your little f nostalgic 12-year-old box. Why don't you grow up? Grow up. Get with the times. Get with the times. Don't come on my shit and call me motherfucker and talking about, I don't even know what Aaron's party is. All right? This shit don't know what Aaron's party is. All right? We don't care. Stop doing drugs. Look at your eyes. Don't call me motherfucker. Did your mom raise you right? You don't call it all. You know, all y'all keep looking over to somebody. Everyone that keeps on coming on here hating. I know who you're looking at. Who? Who? Show me. Who the f am I looking at? Show me. Nobody. No, I want to see your wall. I cannot believe you're treating a fan like this. You're not a fan. I can't believe a fan would call me motherfucker. Dude. You are so delusional. Dude, you're a f***ing disrespectful bitch. Get it? What? Don't call me motherfucker. Okay. Did I apologize? And you said, no, you didn't mean it. Remember, you're on drugs. You're on drugs. I have real fans. I don't know you from a f***ing can of paint. You know what that means? How old are you, 23? Yeah? No, I can't talk. I'm delusional. You are, I'm clearly. Clearly you yeah. need help. Go get some help. Yeah. Go yeah, get some so help and stop stalking. Exactly. Stop stalking me. Exactly. Oh, you're gonna judge me? Oh, you must believe in the devil then. Yeah, you like the devil? <laughs> Look at you. Did you fart when you laughed? You, I don't even look. You're here. Good, like, guess what? <laughs> you and the horse you rode in on. <laughs> Bye. All of these people coming at me, you're gonna lose. The look on her face is just pure disbelief and sadness that her idol is like chewing her the f out. And she was so excited to talk to him in the beginning. Ugh, it's just it's heartbreaking. Also, he does like to troll. Um, I have something really serious I need to talk to you guys about. So. Something pretty serious. Pretty, pretty serious. You know, you know how many idiots I just made text a bunch of people and gave a bunch of people. Oh my god, okay, you go do shit. You stupid asses. <laughs> You're my puppet. There's no doubt that he loves to troll the trolls, and he does it frequently and often. And in his lives, he ends up being more of an insult comic in his live streams than anything else. You're ah! not silencing me, bitch. You're on my shit. You shaking ass weirdo. Get the out of here, potato head. Now, I really want to go over more in depth one of Aaron's favorite and most frequent topics to rant about online. You may have guessed it. Yes, it's his brother Nick. There is so much resentment here, guys. You can just feel it emanating from the screen. 
Aaron seems to think that his brother is this sinister mastermind that coordinated a secret Backstreet Boy fan gang to destroy Aaron. And Aaron played a video that actually looked quite alarming of people coming to his house in the middle of the night and stalking him, uh, breaking into his home. All right, guys, so they hacked into my ADT. Um, this is the clip of the women last night waving at my cameras, blowing kisses, um, BSB gang stalkers um, literally after me. So um, they hacked into my ADT account. I got back into it. I see all the clips. Um, I just had another person come in and try to say that they wanted to uh, come into my house. Um, my uh, my credit cards are are stolen. My license is gone. Um, can't find any of my stuff. My door was wide open when I came back home. Um, this is them last night at 1.52 in the morning when I was sleeping. Um, this is what they're doing to me. Um, uh, two females and a guy and I recognized them from yesterday and people are wondering oh you know you're sick oh this oh this you're crazy look I'm not crazy at in the middle of the night coming and stealing my stuff the cops are on their way so I keep telling you guys that and that's because I'm being silenced because my, my brother is a rapist and they're coming after me because of it so um, that's basically the deal Come to find out, here's what really happened. You contacted a fellow YouTuber to go to his house. I've ne I never contacted a YouTuber to go to his house. There's a woman named Corinne Forever, okay? The blonde woman. She's a live streamer who is co-mingles in the same community that I do. And she was in the Discord server that I was in. She went into a voice chat with him. And Aaron said, yeah, girl, come on down. Come stream. Help me set everything up. And she showed up and he never answered and said that it was BSB gang stalkers trying to do it. She went live multiple times and claims to have texts that absolve her of this. I haven't looked into it myself because I don't personally care about Corinne and I had nothing to do but with that. He, um, from what I know and was told because I had to give a statement about it, he filed a police report um, saying that she went to his house and possibly broke into his house and is stalking him and we were asked you know if we sent anyone to Aaron's house absolutely not no so if it's in fact true that he had them go to his house that's filing a false police report <laughs> that's what's been happening to our family is everything that has that it, that you've seen on Instagram live on his mm. part is pretty much the antithesis or the opposite of what's actually happening. No, I'm self projecting mm -hmm. what he's done, is doing, going to do. Right. And it's really, really sad because we've watched his mental health and his health and his state of being just get swallowed up. And we don't even know. I don't know my brother in law anymore. My husband and his sister and our family don't know their brother. We strongly feel that he needs to get some sort of help. How he, and he has he has the resources. He can go to the doctors. He can go to different news outlets. He, and he has resources. But in his narcissistic mind, he will not relinquish control over his reality that he's painted in the world which is right. the what you're seeing on instagram live which changes every five minutes no absolutely now aaron always talks about how nick is jealous of him and how aaron always has to point out that he is more talented and strong and a better son and a better everything and it's sad to see in real time the gradual disintegration of these two brothers relationship now, this is just my theory, so don't take it as fact, but it's just my opinion. So for starters, I do sympathize with Aaron as far as having to walk in the shadow of a super famous brother. At some point, how does that not mess with someone's self-worth, their self-esteem, and their identity? Especially growing up in a showbiz family. I mean, unfortunately... Aaron's whole identity is tied to Nick. 
Even when he wants to distance himself from Nick and make a name for himself, the conversation at some point will always lead back to Nick. So let me give you guys a little bit of an example of what I'm talking about. For starters, if someone asks, how did you get discovered? Nick can answer by saying, my talent. This teacher spotted my talent. I won such and such talent show. I auditioned for X and got the part. And Aaron, on the other hand, has to answer the question by saying, my brother, X, Y, Z. Hone those skills where he grew up, right here in Tampa. When daylight for your tears, I'm here. A teacher at Miles Elementary School gave him a break, a starring role in the 1990 school play Phantom of the Opera. Down in Tampa, where you grew up. Yeah. You're just a big fan of music. Were you always musical? Were you like early jumping on the keys? Or well, the drums? it was. Well, I I have a I have an older brother. Yep. His name's Prick Carter. There it is. We love him. We love Prick, him. The Prick, <laughs> Nick the Prick. <laughs> Fucking dickhead. An influence. Um, either way you cut it, right? Man, whatever. He's yeah. an older brother. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, we don't really like each other. Uh, no, just kidding. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, and to add insult to injury, his manager had already told him from a little boy that his whole career was based on a joke. No one thought he could do it. A credit to her. Ms. Montez Dioka held on to the video and mementos of her young pupil for all these years because... He stood out. When he um, did the play, The Phantom of the Opera, he received a standing ovation. And uh, there were people crying in the audience. And we just couldn't believe the way his voice projected. Because I was kind of a gimmick. Right. You got to understand, my career started off as a comedy gimmick. Because Johnny Wright said it was for, a joke. For, for, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. joke. He was wow. planning on doing it as a joke. And all of a sudden, it just it skyrocketed. That's got to do something to that inner voice that doubts you from time to time. Now, let's discuss their difference in longevity. Because very few child stars have been able to transition into adulthood in this industry and maintain their popularity and relevance in the public. And Nick is one of those rare stars to do that. From Elvis to the Beatles. <laughs> teen idols have been part of American culture for decades. And now there's Aaron Carter, 14, and looking to be the next big thing. And around the time that Aaron was transitioning from child to tween, his momager was very well aware of the importance of catapulting him to stardom during this transition period. Now at age 14, Aaron is poised to take the next step to the superstar status his brother has enjoyed. And you guys, they went out guns a-blazing, hiring the most talented people in the business. We're talking about dancers, sets, world-famous choreographers, and there was just no traction. And his big effort fizzled out. And that, again, has to play with your confidence because how can you not compare yourself to your more successful sibling? So here's his older brother that was discovered and catapulted to fame with none of the advantage that Aaron had. Let alone, Nick does seem to have a little bit of resentment that he worked so hard to get where he is while he felt that his little brother wrote his coattails of his name and fame. Aaron. It's <laughs> a pretty cool kid, although he's never been above taking advantage of having me in his family. And... I hope that he didn't voice it often, but you don't have to. I'm sure Aaron heard him mumble it one or two times, and I'm sure he no doubt feels it. How could you not? And on top of all of this, Aaron really wants to stand alone and be taken seriously as a talented artist. All right, I know new music is out. We've got the there show out. There is new out. music out. There is new music What's out. What's the next thing for Aaron Carter? There is new music out. I've been dropping a new single every week. No. Sensational Love, anything dropped. I created all the visuals for them. I directed the visuals for them. I produce, I produce all my own music. I put the live bass, I mix it, I master it. Uh, I, I had the honor of working under Joel, Dead Mouse, for a short period of time, and uh, it was great. He wanted to transition his new music that was just as popular as when he was a kid. The problem is, that when he goes to concerts, a lot of the time fans want him to sing his old songs. Tour. Uh, I did not know that Aaron Carter was still touring. 
Uh, but he did have a tour stop in Virginia this week. And he's doing, like, I guess he's doing some more, like, sort of EDM-sounding music. Uh, but his fans only want one thing. The problem is Aaron does not want to do it and got, got pissed off when the crowd started yelling for one of his first hits. I said it was me. No. Not happening. Not happening. I'm 28, honey. I'm grown. That's what I said about it. All right. When I come out with my click album and I'm doing bigger shows, I'll be like, okay, candy. Like, All right, you want to go? Really? Oh, my God. It's really. So when he's trying to move on from that period of life, people are trying to pull him back to that very moment. Aaron may not be the best singer, but he really is talented in his own right, guys, just in a different way than his brother. You cannot deny that the guy is a hustler. He can grind and he's an entertainer. Those are his strong attributes. And I can't even imagine what this would be like. I mean, just think about it, guys. Most people even athletes like LeBron James or Michael Phelps, or even everyday Joes, it takes years. Years of grinding, years of experience, and time to move up the ladder of success. And most people peak in their older years. So it is extremely abnormal and uncommon, rare even, to peak when you're a little baby, seven, eight years old, and then slowly decline from there. Career-wise, it doesn't get better. You can't ever compare it to the success that you had as a baby. That's got to mess with your head, your self-esteem, your confidence, your self-worth. And add that to his already fucked up childhood. Holy hell, guys. Actually, his chart is more like this because he's not at the bottom. I mean, he's grinding. He's, he's, he's grinding. So now he's at the point where he doesn't have to tour or sing. It doesn't even sound like that's something that he likes to do as a passion anymore, which means he's now paving his own road and doing his own thing. And I'm glad he's walking down his own road so that he doesn't have to be in the shadow of anyone else, which I think could be a really good thing. So right now, at this point, at this particular time, during this particular video, he is focusing on building his family, something that he has always wanted to do. And he bought a house a few years ago. I think they're moving again, which was a dream of his as well. So he recently got engaged and him and his fiance are expecting a child and they're super excited about it. Also, during the making of this video, I had to add this edit in because it seems that right when I was about to publish, Aaron is fed up with social media. From all of you guys, I love the, the, the real supporters, but everyone's tripping out about Instagram. I'm deleting it permanently today. And I'm not talking about a Britney Spears move. All right. I'm talking about permanently. I'm deleting Facebook. I'm deleting Twitter. It's all fucking going away. This shit fucking sucks. So peace out. It's over. What, what, like, I, I don't. I'm just making my statement. I'm done. Like I told y'all, I was here before the internet existed and I'll be here when it's fucking gone. Again, yeah, again. And for good, for good. But you can catch me on OnlyFans. Bye. All right. And he claims he's deleting all of his social media accounts except his OnlyFans account, which he claims he makes like $70,000 a month. So again, is this like some genius marketing plan to get everyone to go over to his OnlyFans? Maybe, but from all indications, it looks like he has pulled this stump before as far as deleting all of his social media accounts. So only time will tell if he really means what he says for good. And I really hope that he can find peace not only with his new family, but eventually make up with his siblings at some point. So we wish Aaron and his soon-to-be wife and baby all the luck and happiness in the world. So I hope I don't have to make a part two for Aaron Carter in this series, but I guess we'll just have to see. I hope you guys liked this addition to the Bizarre World series. And I don't know, guys, I have a huge suspicious feeling that we will be doing a part two 
on Aaron Carter in the near future. And don't forget to check out all of my other videos and subscribe to be notified for the next one. Till next time. Bye guys.